Three, two, one. Ecstatic and relieved would be the, the combination of feelings right now. Happy it's finally done and relieved we made it through, but also excited for the challenge ahead um, of flying an actual yeah. frontline squadron. So yeah, it's extremely intensive. They basically cut now graduated from almost five years of training non-stop, having gone through officer training into BFTS, 2FTS, 79 squadron, 76 squadron, and then finally OCU, and now they've finally achieved um, the dream of becoming a DCAP on the pilot and graduate to the front line. So for them, it's a massive achievement. It's a sense of relief because they don't have to study six days a week. Being a single seat fighter pilot now officially yeah. is uh, something that will still take some time to actually hit home to them until they get out of the squadron. 76 Squadron um, teaches you how to fight a jet. Um, gives you the basics in air, -air combat, in air -to surface, or so dropping bombs. Uh, and gives you a good understanding of the aerial environment in a more high performing aircraft than the PC-9. Yeah. So from there you know how to fight a jet, but you don't know how to fight the actual frontline jets. Yeah. So coming to OCU, you've had some good exposure in air combat, but nothing in the real big corner like is behind us now. Um, the way you prep you know, stays very similar and you develop your own ways and habits uh, of dealing with the pressure, but because it's a completely new jet, a uh, new cockpit, new environment, that's, that's the hard challenge of getting around that, and you've got to do that quite quickly, of course. The first thing is the basics, learning how to start the jet, learning how to do a walk around, and learning the emergency procedures and all the systems on board. And that generally takes about a month, of course, where if you've never flown a Hornet before, I'd never been in the back seat, so I'd never actually been in a Hornet. Uh, and then in one month, you go from never having touched a Hornet to being able to fly it solo, uh, both day, night, in cloud, and in formation. So once you feed, um, complete conversion phase, which is the initial learning how to fly the jet, we begin to learn how to fight the jet. So we start off with air to air, which is about a three month course where you start off going up against 1v1, so just learning how to do basic fighter maneuvers against another jet, moving to 2v1, so air combat maneuvering um, with an instructor as your lead. And then the final part is learning the intercept phase where beyond visual range, we have to find a target and then prosecute that target with long range missiles. And then in the end game, get close and get to a dogfight merge. I've been in the training game a long time, seen a lot of people come through and I never fail to be impressed by the quality of people that we find and that we uh, train through and that just makes our job as instructors much easier when you get dedicated, motivated and capable individuals who just want to work hard and achieve what we've been fortunate enough to achieve in our lifetimes. So the idea is to bring them along that journey and actually introduce them to be one of those team members because again up till now it's been almost set piece um, individual training. 76 Squadron is the first exposure to fighter training per se. Um, but we're actually taking them not only to graduate them on the F-18 but also to turn them into a fighter pilot who can be an individual fighter pilot in his own cockpit but can also operate as a team on a routine basis. So that's actually a lot of the mentoring that we'll do during the course as well is, is how to be a team, how to work together well as a team and maximise the benefits of not just a bunch of individuals but a collective. That is time three one. You can get Being the graduation exercise, obviously uh, we actually go into mission planning. So down here the missions are relatively set piece before they go to High Sierra uh, and study for one mission at a time, whereas up there it's a, a string of missions over about three different mission sets, starting off with offensive air support or support of ground forces on the ground, uh, moving through air to air now as four aircraft instead of just two aircraft that operated up until now, and then taking that four aircraft into the self-escort strike role, which is really the, the main capability of the Hornet, where we can get ourselves into a defender target area and out and deliver weapons onto a target. Uh, so from the instructor community, we're obviously teaching them those skills, so guiding them through planning processes, guiding them through their expectation and requirements as a, as a wingman, not just a two aircraft now, but as four aircraft integrated, where sometimes we're operating as four, sometimes we'll be coordinating two ships or elements within that four ship, uh, and then being able to deliver weapons onto targets as four aircraft simultaneously as well. So 
Um, there is a lot more effort and high CRO both for instructors and, and the students as we increase that mission complexity because uh, we're starting to introduce them to red air, um, so hostile air tactics and how they're going to deal with that as a wingman and what our requirements of them are to demonstrate that they can safely and effectively do that before they leave OSU where they obviously they have that intense supervision and oversight for instructors where they go out to a squadron, yes they have experienced pilots there but not all are instructors so mm. it relies on them meeting that, that minimum standard of safe and effective wingman then go and integrate the squadron and pr progress from there. It was exciting, um, the flying itself was insane, it was the best flying I've ever done in my life. And you really start to merge everything you've done before, so air to air, air to air refueling for the first time and then dropping live weapons for the first time yep. uh, in a Hornet. The whole aim of it, uh, aim of High Sierra is to expose us to what life would be like in a frontline squadron and the final tick for the instructors that we are safe to fly this Hornet solo in combat um, and in the future those instructors will be our leads and we'll be having to protect them while they protect us. It's, yeah, it's indescribable. I mean, I can even remember back to my graduation, the, the sense of relief in terms of that training is over and you've actually graduated as, as a fighter pilot uh, is just a massive achievement because that's where all of them have aimed since they've joined the Air Force and for many, a long before they joined the Air Force. And to actually achieve that is, uh, is amazing. Hmm. Um, so sense of relief, ab absolutely. And uh, sense of you know, gratification uh, in achieving that. And certainly for you know, all the people around, they get to share in that with their course mates as well. Uh, and we as instructors get to share in those roles. It's so gratifying as instructors to see. And in particular, you obviously have a, a range of um, the capabilities in any group of students. So there'll be some who do better than others naturally. Um, but to see all of them get through as a course, because it does rely on them working together as a team as well. Yeah. Um, but with, with us as well, to see them all get yeah. through uh, is fantastic. Initially, I always dreamt of being you know, a fireman or a, um, a monster truck driver was my initial <laughs> one from my parents. They told me when I was young. Um, but growing up on the Gold Coast, there's like, you know, the beaches, doing beach cricket, all the standard Australian things. Um, all the jets used to fly past um, from Amberley. And I remember asking my dad, like, what is that? What's going on there? And he said, oh, they're Air Force pilots. And from then I did a bit of Googling and a bit of research and saw them more and more. And then from then I decided I, I want to do that. That's, that's the best job in the world, to be able to jump in the front seat of a fighter jet and fly around and get paid to do it. I always say, do not live life regretting anything or not knowing whether you might have been able to do something. Um, I recently was an Air Force, invited back as a guest speaker in an Air Force cadet uh, squadron that I was a member of many years ago. Uh, and the advice I left them was, well, don't doubt yourself. So the key is, if you see jobs out there and you think, oh, I'm not sure I can do it, is you need to find out. Like, you need to find all the information possible, make sure you are informed about it. And then if you're still in doubt, go for it anyway. Right? The, you know, the worst that can happen is maybe you can't do that and you, have to, you choose to go and do something else, or you decide that it's not for you. But it's, made, it's important to be make an informed decision along those lines and never lose sight of your dreams and goals. But they are achievable. And I, you know, by my own admission, I was no one special when I joined Air Force. I just wanted to be a pilot and then I wanted to be a fighter pilot. Uh, and I was you know, fortunate enough to be able to achieve all that. And that was through determination and hard work uh, and just keeping focused on that goal the whole time. Have a go. Um, what's the worst that can happen? Um, go somewhere else or you end up in the cockpit of a fighter jet. I think the big things are just attitude and hard work. Um, most of these guys on course, not, not all of them have uni degrees. Um, most of them, not everyone does well in high school. Um, so there's other avenues you can take. Um, but if you just keep working hard and have a good attitude and just wanting to get it done, that'll put you in really good stead um, for the recruitment process and in the training.